Hey everybody and welcome back to Duly Projected. Really glad that you're here for this video. We're going to talk about the 2020 Democratic nominee pretend nope contenders. Yes, we're going to talk about the big dogs in this video and I have the four contenders as far as today. Um, I would call these and this is before, you know, the primaries have begun right before the primaries have begun. So you can see here on a debate stage, not sure where this picture was taken, but you can see here the four contenders, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg. And I'm sure I'll butcher his last name. Sorry, Pete. I know that you're going to be watching this video for sure. Uh, I'm sorry that I butchered that, but I'm not the first person in America to do so, I'm sure. But yeah, let's talk about Pete, Mayor Pete first. And I'm going to go from bottom to top here as far as who I think, you know, the pecking order is at this time. And a lot of people would probably put Mayor Pete in the pretender um, lane if, if they had to decide, you know, put a line in the sand and say, okay, here are the actual contenders, here are the pretenders. And the reason that I'm sticking Pete into this group is because if something were to happen to Joe Biden, you know, health scare, um, just a complete blunder or something ridiculous happens and he has to take himself out of the race, Pete kind of, to me, steps in as the mainstream media, the mainstream Democrat candidate. Um, I see a lot of support there and I have a lot of reason to believe that from polling as well pull this over and we'll look a little bit more in depth as, as far as these polls are concerned but um you know Pete Buttigieg's support would go to Joe Biden so I feel like they're in that kind of same moderate democrat lane and they're gaining a lot of that support um Buttigieg is a little bit above Yang as far as favorability in this poll and a little bit behind Bloomberg. So as far as name recognition, I think for where he's come from as just being a mayor of a city, not that that's some, you know, non-accomplishment or anything, but when we're talking about president of the United States, it might not resonate as strongly as being a governor, senator, congressman, congresswoman type of thing. So yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting that Mayor Pete has come, you know, from basically nowhere to actually being a contender in this race. Um, so uh, that's that's kind of where look, we can take a look, too, at his war chest, see what he's working with. And that's one thing, too. You know, I am kind of putting him as a reserve behind Biden, um, like a contingency plan almost with mainstreamers um but you know i think he could he could definitely challenge biden as well now we're looking at his total race he's actually above biden at 51 million so that makes him a contender in my mind as well tons of money on hand so yeah he might not be at the very top end of polling but with such a still such a wide array of people in this race he doesn't have to be you know he can he can inch up his way, you know, into the 10 to 15 percent. And as long as he's gaining above 15 percent in each state, he's taking home some delegates. And, you know, it's with him, it's going to be all about momentum and whether he can gain that and that sort of thing. So as of right now, I'm putting Mayor Pete into the contender realm. And, you know, once we get some results, once we get some delicate counts and that sort of thing, be able to kind of tell if he can stay as a contender or if he starts to fade. But as far as it is today, his war chest, uh, his ability to, you know, take hold of those moderates and his ability to be kind of the contingent plan behind Biden, if something were to happen to Biden, is a lot of reason why he... I see him staying in this race for a while, um, and I also could see him contending for this race for sure. So 
let's move on to our next contender here. All right, and our next contender in order here is Elizabeth Warren. I put her in third place currently. Now, I think she's done well in 2019 um, as far as coming up to the top. She had a big boost in polling there uh, about a middle of the way in the race, I think, in 2019. And kind of has been, you know, up and down, but no, no drastic changes in polling as far as that's concerned. And it's interesting about Elizabeth Warren is just I feel that she um, she can attract more leftist types and more moderate types. She's kind of in the middle there. So, you know, I think the ploy with attacking um, Bernie Sanders it was definitely, you know, um, a political move in her and, you know, in her parlance or whatever, uh, attacking, saying that a woman couldn't be um, elected president and that sort of thing. Definitely, he, she's definitely trying to go for his supporters if, if for some reason Bernie gets out of the race and that sort of thing. And I do believe that Bernie supporters, Warren supporters would go vice versa. And we can see that here if, you know, their second choice, Biden, or uh, excuse me, Sanders supporters, Elizabeth Warren, and then uh, Warren supporters would go to Bernie. So obviously she's trying to attack Bernie. And I think everybody on that stage that you saw in the picture there, as far as my contenders, all of them are going to be piling on Bernie. And it's almost going to look like it's a joint effort. You know, Biden might go after a war in some a little bit here. Probably not early on. Maybe like in the middle of the race when uh, she's g gaining some steam on him and that sort of thing. I think he's going to wait as long as possible before he goes after Warren and those types. And, you know, Buttigieg on the campaign trail has already started lobbing attacks towards Biden. So I don't think... He would have any reservations going after him either. But uh, it's almost going to look like a joint effort going after Bernie Sanders. Because, you know, if for some reason Bernie Sanders goes down, those voters have to go somewhere. And they're waiting to, you know, waiting in the wings to pick those voters up. So um, let's take a look and see kind of how Elizabeth Warren stacks up in polling. And I'm going to do a video dedicated just on polling. So if you're a polling nut, uh, a deep dive into polling is coming soon to you. And, you know, she's right around the 15% margin here nationally. We go to early states. She's right around 11%. Steyer's actually a little bit above her in early states. We go to Super Tuesday, and she's still around that 15% range. So... The reason she's attacking Bernie, um, in my mind, is, you know, she's definitely trying to gain some of those supporters away from him. You see Hillary attacking Bernie in the media. I don't think that's, you know, just happenstance. It just happened like it's definitely kind of like a joint effort here, I think, to kind of gain some supporters into Warren's side away from Bernie, basically, so... Um, be interesting to see them going at it at the d future debates, going at it on the campaign trail, that kind of thing. But uh, as far as right now, she's just kind of she's kind of there to gain more supporters away from the others if she can. So that's why you kind of see her attacking a little bit more than others. Others are just kind of trying to hold firm at this time, hold their posture, and then um, gain as as they can. But Elizabeth Warren, she's really got to start lobbing those attacks to hopefully get over those hurdles and stay in this race as long as she can. Now she's at 60 million raised. Bernie's got 74 million raised. He's at the very tip top of the leaderboard as far as that's concerned. She's got 25 million on hand here, so a little bit above Pete Buttigieg. So her war chest, she's... She's financed to the hills here, man. She can definitely take on these top two guys as far as who I think are the contenders right now. She can take them on um, as far as the bank's concerned. 
but uh, she's just got to start making a little bit more headway in polls. And polls, like I said, it doesn't really matter if you actually get results in the primary states themselves. So we'll see what she does in this first four to kind of predict for Super Tuesday and that sort of thing. But she's got to at least hit her numbers now and obviously it needs to be an improvement on that to uh, gain as many delegates as possible in these early states. So we'll ta- we'll be keeping an eye on Elizabeth Warren and what are her campaign, what kind of strategies they put in place and what kind of headway they can make moving forward in this season. So well, next up is Mr. Bernie Sanders. So yeah, our next contender up here is Mr. Bernie. He is second in my contender rankings right now, and I feel like that's a very fluid position, very fluid situation at the top. One and two, Biden and Bernie. Basically, Bernie's still playing that outsider card. He definitely has the far left to left support that's definitely in his wheelhouse now. Can he move that support into the moderate realm? That's where I'm having difficulty with Bernie. But in a large field, he can gain his 20 to 30 percent there and still stay in the race for sure. Um, you know, I, right now in Iowa, he has a lot of people from the squad that are campaigning for him. And that's good and all, and you want to have that young energy, but. Is that alienating himself from the base, from where the Democrats are now? Um, Time will tell on that, but as it sits right now, you know, I think that's a bonus to have them in his back pocket, but also it could be a hindrance moving forward. Um, As of right now, like I said, he's definitely number two. We can take a look here as far as polling is concerned. Let's go switch back to just overall six points behind Biden in national early primary states, which I'll talk more about Iowa in specific and New Hampshire. Um, currently, I think he's probably winning those two states as far as like who's number one, who's on the one line, because you know there's going to be a. Mm, at least three people that get delegates from those states so um it's not like it's a big deal really in the grand scope of things but it's a big deal as far as momentum is concerned so we'll definitely take a look at that in detail on another video we go to super tuesday and he's only four four points behind button super tuesday is the biggest get of them all and i'll show you that here on the wikipedia page give you a little bit of idea of the delegate count for Super Tuesday. And you see here, this is the first four. And those are the pledge delegates that, you know, a number of candidates will be splitting, basically. But on Super Tuesday, March 3rd, there's 1,344 delegates up for grabs. It's basically a third of the whole, you know, primary itself is up for grabs on Super Tuesday, so that's why it's such a big deal. Some big states here, California and Texas. So definitely um, wants to have that momentum going into that day. Now let's take a look at polling uh, between Bernie and Biden. And you can see here, Bernie is pretty much following a similar wave with Biden. But now you see coming into February, starting to creep up a little bit. Even though Biden has the edge overall, Bernie is starting to gain a little bit of momentum. And we see that also here. Uh, Let's see. Now, saying his popularity erodes among older voters, but we've seen some recent polls, which I'll do more of a detailed video, where he is gaining a little bit on Biden and specific races so um and favorability they're deadlocked here in this poll and their own favorability is deadlocked as well six percent heard of no opinion 
never heard of. So, you know, Bernie, Bernie and Baden, basically in my mind is 1A and, t and 1B as far as at the top. There's just not a lot of room between the two. And you could almost say they're interchangeable. And when I talk about Biden here, which is going to be my last contender, we're going to talk more in detail about the delegate count at this time. So let me go ahead and pull over here and let's talk more about Joe Biden. All right. And let's talk about our final contender here at the top spot, Mr. Joe Biden. And, you know, Obviously, he's pretty much led all the way from the beginning of this race. You know, I think Bernie might have topped him here and there in a few different polls, but on the aggregate side of things, he's pretty much stayed ahead of of Bernie. Um, we can see here his aggregate. This is the aggregate of the aggregate. So, <laughs> like, this is the aggregate of real clear. This is the aggregate of 538. This is the aggregate of The Economist. This is the aggregate of 270 to win. So the aggregate of the, all the aggregates. And Joe Biden's um, ahead of Bernie here by five points. So this is national. So, you know, as far as delegate count and that sort of thing, that's where things are going to uh, start, you know, uh, differentiating between the two when delegates are starting to come into play here like we said bernie's at the very top of the leaderboard as far as money raised for his campaign this is where Biden's struggling and i'm kind of concerned i don't really understand it i felt like a lot of uh mainstreamers moderate democrats would be uh, behind him but physically fiscally it doesn't seem so. And I know Bernie has had a head start. I'm sure he had a good amount of money that transferred over from his previous campaigns. And that might be why Biden's a little bit behind. Um, last time Biden ran for office, obviously was for president in 2008. So then he was VP for eight years and hasn't held a political office since that time. So uh, obviously Bernie had the edge there as far as his campaign starting out with a bigger war chest cash on hand you know bernie sanders elizabeth warren and pete all have more much more on hand so this is kind of where i'm concerned with joe Biden. i don't know if more money will start flooding in if he starts showing good returns here um but as far as as far as it stands now you know He's, he's at a detriment here with the other leading contenders. So we'll kind of keep a watch on that. Now I have done a little Excel spreadsheet here. Which you can see. Uh, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. So I, what I've done here... Let me move myself over here. Okay. What I've done here is this is all the aggregation of these early states and some of the Super Tuesday states. You know, bigger states are going to have much more polling and have the ability to be able to see kind of like where candidates stand at that point. Uh, just more money going to be put into those races because they impact the race such at a wider disparity than you know smaller states with smaller number of delegates so here we can see um what i've done is basically their aggregate score i'm giving them that percentage of delegates and this is only just to see kind of where these top four stand at this point just in polling and i understand when the returns come in can be vastly different than what polling has and we're going to track that as well. We're going to see how close these polls were to actual results. So that'll be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that. But let's total everything up here. Um, and we can see Biden has 357 delegates to Warren's 242. 
Bernie's 238, and Buttigieg at 90. So that's what we're talking about is, you know, that's why you can kind of put Buttigieg back into the pretender land. But for all the reasons that I gave him earlier in the video is why I have him up here with this top four. All of those reasons. And like I said, you can see here Warren is definitely competing very closely with Bernie. And that's why Elizabeth Warren's kind of going at Bernie because she knows... If there's any way to draw any of his support towards her camp, it helps her going against Biden here. And this is one thing about the campaign that's going to be very interesting is if, you know, we get it weeded down to three or four with a number of states to go and it's pretty tight. If that third person goes out, you know, a lot of support is going to those top two and who is it going to be? That's why that's very critical and that's very key to watch for too. So uh, once this thing starts rolling down the hill and we kind of get some more clarity of where these candidates stand, you know, we'll do a little bit more insight to that. So I hope you enjoyed this contender video. Um, you know, let me know what you think. If I'm being a little bit too harsh or if I'm giving a little bit too much credit to some of these candidates, I want your insight. I want I want what you all think about this, and we can hash it out in the comments section. So I appreciate you taking a look at this, and I will be seeing you on the next one. Take care.